So let's discuss the differences between self-pollination and cross-pollination. So the first point under self-pollination is so for self-pollination, transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the same flower occurs and for cross-pollination So for cross-pollination, transfer of pollen grains from the anther to the stigma of the different flowers occurs. So now let's move on to the second point. So for self-pollination, this process can take place either in the same flower or another flower of the same plant and for cross-pollination this process can take place between two flowers on different plants. Now let's move on to the third point. So self-pollination occurs in the flowers which are genetically same and for cross-pollination So cross-pollination occurs between flowers which are genetically different. So let's move on to the fourth point. So the fourth point says that self-pollination occurs only in perfect flowers and for cross-pollination so cross-pollination occurs both in perfect or imperfect flowers. Let's move on to the fifth point. So self-pollination causes homozygous condition in the progenies and cross-pollination they causes heterozygous conditions in the progenies. So let's move on to the next point. So self-pollination increases genetic uniformity and decreases genetic variation and for cross-pollination so cross-pollination decreases genetic uniformity and increases genetic variation. So let's move on to the seventh point. So self-pollination causes inbreeding and cross-pollination causes so it causes outbreeding. Cross-pollination causes outbreeding. So next we have so self-pollination reduces the gene pool and cross-pollination so cross-pollination maintains the gene pool. So the ninth point under self-pollination says that it produces limited amounts of pollen grains and for cross-pollination so cross-pollination produces large amounts of pollen grains. So in self-pollination both the stigma and the anther mature at the same time but for cross-pollination for cross-pollination the stigma and the anther mature at different time. So let's move on to the next point. So for self-pollination, a few number of pollen are transferred. But for cross-pollination, large number of pollens are transferred. So let's move on. So the 12th point says that this process is carried out even when the flowers are closed. This is for self-pollination and for cross-pollination. So for cross-pollination, flowers should be open. So the last point under the self-pollination says that no need of pollinators to transfer pollen grains and for cross-pollination so require pollinators to transfer pollen grains pollen grains are transferred through insects wind water and animals etc so these were the differences between self-pollination and cross-pollination at last let's see a diagram which shows these two pollination techniques in details so the self-pollination diagram is shown here here the pollen grains marked as one are being transferred from the anther these are the anther from the anther to the stigma of the same flower so hence this is known as self-pollination and for cross-pollination so for cross-pollination you can see that the pollen grain moves from the anther of one flower to the stigma of another flower this is a different flower this is one and this may be named as two so the pollen grains are being transferred from the stigma from the anther of flower 1 to the stigma of the flower 2. So these were the differences between self-pollination and cross-pollination.